open so we could go back to our data input. We could view the graphs, which are just full size presentation style graphs, or we can get the financial planning report. So when I click on reports, we have some options. We can choose to include page numbers with our reports. If you want the reports to specify that it's a draft copy, we have that option. Um, so you just check the items that apply and then you need to choose which reports you want to run. So by default, uh, the first report here is entire report. If I select that and click on generate report, that's going to ensure all the reports possible get generated for me. You can also narrow down the reports that are generated to those related to just retirement, estate, insurance, debt freedom, you have some options here. You can also create custom reports, so either under administration, your administrator can do that for you, or if you have permissions to do it, you'll have the option under settings. In this case, I'll go ahead and select the entire report. Generating that report. You can see it's working. It will take just a little time to get that report going. And as soon as it's available, this orange button will open up and you can click on it and it will open that report for you. So if I say silver report, depending on what browser you use, I'm using Chrome, it doesn't automatically open. Some, some will, mine will not. And now we can see not only do I have this uh, financial plan saved, I can open it up and it's just a PDF file. So in this case, since I generated that full set of reports, it is 57 pages altogether. So we can see the cover page prepared by Silver Financial Planner. Our address, this of course, is all the information that you would customize in your own program. If you chose to include a logo for your cover, it would show up here as well. Information about the plan, a summary of the plan, so you can see their current situation, you know, what kind of assets, liabilities, net worth, uh, the client currently has, goals as far as when they want to retire, what they want to spend in retirement, um, what their last life expectancy is set as, some analysis details, and in this case where the client is running out of money, the program will come up with some shortage solutions. So this can be really handy. These are things you can also plug into that what if and model. They have an option of uh, increasing their savings, so if they increase their savings by $5,000 a year, that would eliminate their shortfall. If they would also uh, have an option of reducing their spending, so if they reduce their spending by $4,700 a year, that would work. Or delay their retirement two years, as we saw in the what if when we were trying that one year wasn't quite enough, but two years would, would, would allow them to make it without running out of money. Or of course, of any combination or any action you can you can uh, think of that to solve that short solutions, but those are the, the actions that will be automatically calculated in the system. So we won't go through all the reports here, but I'll try to highlight some of the main report pages. We have assumptions, which is a great report to give your client and for you just to review the information that's entered in the system and make sure there's no glaring errors, like you entered in um, a monthly amount instead of an annual amount for Social Security. So these are items that you can kind of keep your eyes open and view that assumptions page. Their net worth, asset worksheet, asset allocation, retirement profile, resources available for retirement which goes along with the previous page, retirement summary, so this is the same graph we saw when we jumped to that what if section. This is going to, unlike the what if, which doesn't have any text on the page, is going to give a description of what you're seeing, as well as provide those shorted solutions when they are running out of money. Information on the Monte Carlo, as well as the Monte Carlo graph. You can see the blue line here. That blue line is the fixed result, so that's their retirement projection with the fixed rates of return. The trials are represented by these gray lines, so those are the 10,000 trials that are run. It's a sample of those 10,000 trials with the varying rates of return. So you can see some information below the graph which shows us the percentage of funds at last life expectancy. In this original scenario it was only 16%. 
Um, so they essentially were running out of money. Their worst case, they also, of course, ran out of money, but we could see it could happen a lot sooner. One of their trials, at least, ended up really well with about $5 million, but we know that is very few of those 10,000 trials that were run. Behavior analysis information, so if you did choose to include the behavior analysis reports, you can see that we have the same graphs that we saw on the data input, but a lot more details to go along with it. So this is a great place to read more about the behavior analysis as you're getting familiar with it. Goal evaluation, so when we looked at those special expense type items, this is where you could set the priority level, and this is what that information is used for. So it shows you your Monte Carlo success if you include just essential expenses or all these type expenses. So our Monte Carlo would go up to 22% if we didn't include any of these primary or secondary expenses and just covered our, our essential expense of replacing the roof. Still not great, but a little bit better. Retirement expenses, a graphical view of their cash flow, a numbers report to support that graph of the cash flow. So we can see pre-retirement, their income sources include earned income. The negative amounts that you see here are actually their deposits that they're making into their retirement accounts. Once it turns to black, it's actually the withdrawals that they're taking from those accounts. Investment accounts, pre-retirement, we have a little bit of a mix uh, in red. Typically that's going to be, again, those additions, but the program might also be taking some money out for things like a special expense item that they would have to pull from their assets to cover. Pension and Social Security, when those items start, makes up for their total sources, just adding up everything to the left, compared to their living expenses and taxes to determine if they have a shortage or a surplus. One thing that's important to know in this program is it is a goal-based planning program, so these surpluses prior to retirement are ignored. The program is running off the assumption that they're only saving what you've actually specified by making those de uh, deposits or additions into the assets. So the fact that we see an $8,000 surplus here, the program's not going to assume that's being saved. It's only going to save what we actually have specified as account deposits. Post-retirement, the program changes gears. So if there's a surplus post-retirement, it will save. If there's a shortage pre-retirement, um, the program will ignore that pre-retirement shortage or surplus. But as soon as they are retired, it will switch modes and it will make sure to, to account for every shortage or surplus going forward. So once they do retire, the program is going to take distributions from their assets to ensure that they have enough to cover their living expenses and taxes and it won't show a shortage here until their accounts were actually depleted and they weren't able to cover those expenses by assets any longer. A view of their assets, and then we get into the retirement capital analysis, and this is kind of the heart of the retirement reports. This shows you pre-retirement, not too much is going on because the program's really concerned with how their assets are growing prior to retirement with the exception of some of these special expense or income items. Um, so we can see prior to retirement, we've got additions going into our assets. We can see that accounts grow with those additions and the rates of return. But once they do retire, we see spending start. We can see items like Social Security and pensions coming in. And that shortage that you have is just the difference between what they're spending, what's coming in from these outside income sources of pension and Social Security. And this is going to be the amount that the program needs to pull from their assets to cover. One thing you'll notice here is the expenses are lower for the years be, uh, between individual one and two's retirement age. And the program, as soon as one person retires, starts that retirement spending. If one person's still working, it will apply that working individual's after-tax earned income to the spending amount to make sure to account for the fact that one individual is still working. And then once they both retire, switch to that full spending. So we can see the numbers that go along with the graph that we saw when we looked at the what if or the graph that we saw on the retirement summary page, that their assets are growing and then depleting and actually running out before individual two's last life expectancy, about five years before that last life expectancy. The next reports are going to be uh, the asset projections. And again, the program groups those assets by their uh, taxation type, so all the savings uh, and taxable type investments will get grouped together. Tax deferred, tax deferred retirement accounts, so you can get the details of how those balances are changing over time on these pages. 
The next section is talking about life insurance. So it does a survivor needs analysis for both individuals. And this looks at if death were to occur today. So the first survivor needs analysis is looking at John's insurance. So this would be assuming that John were to die and his spouse Mary would uh, be a survivor. So what it does is it looks at the present value of all the spending needs. So this is Mary's spending needs from her current age until her life expectancy, adding on some education expenses, other final expenses, um, special expense type items. From there, we can see a total present value of what her spending will be from now until life expectancy, which is about 1.5 million. But she is going to be working and she is going to be getting Social Security benefits, which amount to about $750,000. That will come in and help offset that total spending. The difference is going to be that survivor need shortage amount. The program is also going to make sure that they have enough to cover their existing liabilities. Then it's going to consider what kind of assets they have available now, what kind of life insurance coverage is already available to come up with a suggested additional life insurance needs. So we're saying that John should have more like $800,000 of insurance rather than the $300,000 that he has. So he would need about a half a million dollar policy in addition to his current coverage. So we have that same report for individual two and then the calculations to support it. The program also does a, a little bit of disability and long-term care planning. And then we get into the next section, which is estate planning. The program's going to look at a current situation, which in this case is just a simple will, marital transfer type situation. And then it's also going to come up with an alternative situation, which looks at taking advantage of credit shelter trust and moving any life insurance into an islet. So we can see that alternative situation flowchart, and it will have supporting number type report behind it. Those look at if um, death were to occur today, what their estate situation would be. This next page that we're looking at now also projects 10 years into the future, which in this case, um, with about a maximum in this projection, 10 years out of under a million dollars still, they do not have an estate tax situation as we can see. But for clients that are maybe on the cusp, they can look, look at their future situation and see if it is an issue coming up for them. The next page is our education funding report. So if you did enter in those dependent children and college costs, this is the report page that's going to tell us what kind of deposits we need to make to cover these uh, education costs. So we have two children that are getting put through school. We can see their total cost is going to be just under $200,000. They have $20,000 now. They could make a lump sum deposit if they were able to of $107,000 uh, today, or they can make annual deposits of just under $14,000 a year. Um, these numbers are actually a little different than the numbers you see up above and in this table, and that question comes up quite often in support. And the difference is this is looking at funding the children separately, so if we were to pay for Janie, we would have to pay for her uh, school by making deposits of $6,000. $624 from now until her last year of college and we do the same thing for John from now until his last year of college. The numbers up above and the numbers illustrated in this table is assuming that we're making level payments. So it's going to be one deposit between now and that last child's last year of college. So that's why that number looks a little bit lower than the number that we see here. So if they did make that level deposit this is the deposit required and they would pay for all the college costs um, based on that information. So that's your education funding report. Then we have some additional uh, education type reports on investments. Then we get into the debt freedom. So this is going to come up with their debt freedom plan, which they're saying uh, based on their credit card and auto loans, if we were to apply the payments to that higher credit card debt, we could pay off our loan in two years, three months faster. And it has supporting type pages that go along with that as well, debt education type pages. And from there that covers it. So that is that full set of reports available to you. And let me get back to the program. We're running a little bit short on time. but.